Peace. Welcome to our channel, Fulfillment of Our Soul. I'm John, and if this is your first time coming, we wanna say welcome. If you're coming back, we wanna say welcome back. I wanna give a special shout out to Rashawn. Rashawn asked me a question, and that question was, what made me move to Africa? Before I go any further, just remember to subscribe, like, comment, and share. So let's get into this thing. Why I decided to move to Africa. Actually, I haven't moved to Africa 100%. I came here this time just to visit. And upon my visit, I decided to stay. So um, just today, I went and I signed a one year lease on a brand new compound that is, isn't even finished being built yet, but it will be ready uh, by December 20th, it will be ready. So I'm taking it step by step. That lease is for one year, so I'm here for one year at the lease. So I could say that much. As far as moving, um, it looks like it's gonna be two years from, from the beginning of next year before we actually move. So uh, moving is a bigger step. This is just a baby step. So what made me decide to come to Africa? I would say from a very young age, from the seventies, ever since Alex Haley's roots, I've had this desire and this urge to want to explore Africa and, and my ancestry. It was so crazy because when Roots came out, I remember watching it. I was in the first grade. I remember watching it and I remember it having such an impact on me that every episode I would cry and I would go to my sister Lucy. It was like an after school special. I would go to my sister Lucy and I'd be like, yo, do me a favor. I was like, could you watch this this program with me, Roots? And she was like, I, I you know, what, what do you mean? I said, yeah, they got this thing on TV called Roots. But I'd be crying when I would ask her, I'd be crying. She said, why are you crying? I said, I don't know. And she was like, well, if it makes you upset, don't watch it. I was like, nah, I gotta watch it. She was like, what do you mean you got? I said, I don't know, I gotta watch it. So I watched that and man, that has such an impact on me. And this was the first eye opening awakening that I experienced about knowledge of self or knowledge of, you know, Africa and Africans being related to African Americans. Because in school, and when you look at different ideologies based upon American history, it seems as if black people, African Americans or African Americans or what do you want to call them? Uh, call us. Our history begins with slavery and. Anybody that is conscious and aware of how things go, our history is much more deeper than slavery. Slavery slavery was just one of the circumstances of our history, but it is not the beginning, nor is it the ending of our history. But the American school society and, and, and entertainment in, in general, television, tell lies to your vision and radio radio frequency to kill your brain cells, they don't tell you the truth about your black history and all the contributions that blacks and Africans have made to this world. So having that, and then growing up in a place like Boston, Massachusetts, where racism is like right there in your face, you know, and when I, what I mean by that, which right there in your face, in Boston, where I grew up, if a white person does not like you, or they feel like you're a nigger, or there's something about you that they just don't agree with, they will let you know. Now, don't get me wrong. There is some good people of the Caucasian persuasion. There are plenty of them. Don't get it twisted. You know what I'm saying? They're an exception of the rule, but it is what it is. Coming from Boston, I've been called nigger. I've been attacked by white people. I've been 
be uh, brutally attacked by police officers wrongly. I've been wrongly accused of things. Uh, the list goes on and on, but um, the unfortunate part about it is this became a norm. Like, I just thought this was normal. Like, so when things, uh, I'm gonna fast forward a little bit, when things started happening in the world and I see things happening, it's like, it means, it's like, oh yeah, I've been through that. I could relate. But I also uh, don't allow it to affect me like that. You know what I'm saying? I also don't allow it to affect me like that. So, uh, moving right along, uh, growing up in Boston, uh, white people and dealing with white people on that level, it sort of gave me tough skin for what else is going on in the world. Um, it it prepared me, like, yo, like, I don't let white people treat me any other kind of way. I'm not going to just move because you're white and you're ignorant and you don't want to uh, say excuse me. And that's for any 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 race of people people i don't care who it is you know i'm not just gonna let you just disrespect me but uh growing up in boston prepared me for the world in terms of a racist world or a racist america so you take that and then you take uh all the things that was going on in the world which crazy enough i felt and i became just as prejudiced as those people that are prejudiced against black because i started to and I have, and I will admit this, when I see things happen to people, not necessarily black people, not necessarily murder, but when I see a black man getting ar arrested, I sometimes say, I wonder what he did to deserve that. Now, is that right or wrong? But the question is, did he really do anything? Or are these particular people in power also like, yo, if you're black, you get this standard of treatment opposed to any other race. And it's true. It is true. We do get treated much differently. It just happened to me today. I went into a store to get some furniture and it was a black sister. And I asked her the price and she told me, let's say the price was 500. I seen this, uh, Caucasian lady come up and she asked her, the lady asked her the price and she deducted it by 300 right off the top. And then when I confronted the sister, I was like, yo, oh, so this is now, this is now 200, right? She was like, oh no. I was like, yo, I just heard you tell her that it was 300. She's like, oh no, 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 uh-uh. So to make a long story short, once we got to the manager, the, the manager, without even knowing what was happening, he gave us the same price that she gave the lady, but the only difference is the lady's bargaining chip will start there at the 200 where ours ended, if that makes sense to you. So these things happen. There's different treatment that happens. But why did I move to Africa or come to Africa? Uh, last year on my birthday, and I think I addressed this in one of the videos, last year on my birthday, my lady got me an African ancestry. Uh, swab kit where you do you swab your mouth and they send it off they test your DNA and uh, on my birthday she gave it to me I did it we put it in the mail there's a video somewhere out there for it and uh, she had started watching all these videos these different videos about these people leaving America the UK and other parts of the planet going back to Africa. This is African descendants going back to Africa. They call them diaspora, uh, uh, if I'm saying that right. Uh, I don't like the term, but anyway, um, you know, it was, a, it was a big thing, these ex, expat, ex, expats. And, you know, she was really deep into it and I started looking at that and then she'd be like, I wanna leave, I wanna leave, I wanna leave. I'm like, yo, come on, let's do it. And she's like, okay. And then it's like, yo, it falls off. And she's like, I wanna do it, I wanna do it. I'm like, yo, you bull. You bull crapping because we could have been did it. And she's like, I want to do it, I want to do it. But you know, this, that, you know, all these different things will pop up. So uh, three months after I did my ancestry, it came back. And when my ancestry came back, my ancestry came back that I'm 99.7 I'm 99 uh, from the Mandika people. Senegal and the Gambia is in this region of Senegal I mean 
It's like Senegal, Senegal and the Gambia is across the street from each other. They're separated by a river. And I was like, wow. I was like, yo, we, we, we going. Cause I gotta get to my people. I said, yo, we going. And uh, to make a long story short, things just started formulating. I mean, we looked at, t well, she really was the one and I give her a shout out to Anita. She's the one that really made everything happen. Love you, baby. She, um, you know, looked at the hotel situation. She looked at, uh, you know, tickets, flight times and all that. You know, what do we need as far as vaccinations and everything like that. And then the next thing you know, we got our tickets. We had booked our hotel uh, uh, close to the date we were supposed to leave. Um, the tickets got canceled. And, you know, we, you know, she was all depressed and everything. I said, don't worry about it, don't worry about it. If it's meant to happen, it's gonna happen. Sure enough, I think a week or two weeks later, uh, some other tickets came across and we had to take a different path, but uh, we did that thing. And when you look at this series of videos, you basically, we basically walk you through the whole thing. Now, let me address this whole thing right here. People talking about America and their conditions uh, of America. I, I'm a businessman. I basically, in my mind, have carved out my own little piece of United States of America, and that's where I live. It's not a geographical location. It's just a space in my mind. And I pretty much had come to terms with everything that is going on in America. And that's wrong. That's wrong. It, it is wrong. It is wrong. I will be the first one to admit that it is wrong that I think that way. But as a businessman and an independent black man in America, this was my level of reasoning. This was this is what I did to be able to do what I had to do because I will tell you that a lot of my customers are white, Asian, and Indians. I didn't have a lot of black support. I did have black support, but not a lot of it. So in order for me to do the business that I do, I sort of had to stay neutral and not really express my true feelings because my feelings usually would let me down and deceive me and get me into a lot of trouble. So I had come to terms with what was going on in America. And like I said before, I, th I know and I do understand that was wrong. And uh, the question now is like, what do you do? How do you help a situation that's helpless? What's going on in America? What's going on with the relationship between black and white? Just and our, and, the, and our current president, I mean, it's just ridiculous. It's ridiculous. We need a makeover. And, and let me tell you about the president. I don't like him. You know what I'm saying? I don't like him to the point where I designed a sneaker dissing him. And I'm gonna add the link in this in this post right here in this video, so you can go and you can check out the shoe that I designed, saying <laughs> Donald Trump. You heard me. Donald Trump. You know what I'm saying? Go check out the sneaker. It's there for your purchase. I appreciate the support. But yeah, these are the reasons why I came to Africa. The Gambia specifically. Um, uh, I hope and pray that a lot of people within earshot and view of this uh, video will take it in consideration to come and take a look into Africa. Just come and take a look. And don't let me or anybody else influence you or tell you this is what it is, this is what it's not. You got to come and you got to experience and see it for yourself. So you'll know for yourself. And can't nobody tell you what you know. Can't nobody tell you what you're seeing, you're not seeing. Because what I'm seeing is a beautiful thing. And you can see in my background, this is what I wake up to every day. You know what I mean? This is what I wake up to every day. And um, I look forward to the possibilities, the endless possibilities that I'm, I'm seeing here, uh, it only takes me a short period of time before I'm able to adjust and move forward. And that adjustment is happening now. And I'm making motion. I'm making motion. I have a lot of things in store for you guys to be a part of. We're a community. We're a community. The fulfillment of our soul community. If you're a subscriber, you, you're viewing these videos, you're coming out, you're you're sharing, you're liking, you're commenting, you're, you're part of the community. You know what I mean? And that's one of the things that I've noticed more than anything else is being in the Gambia, that this is one big community. You have a lot of different tribes, but it's one community. You know what I mean? And people generally look out for each other here. They look out for each other. 
and it ain't all the hustle and bustle and craziness that's going on in America. They, now they get their game, they get their hustle on. Don't get me, don't get it twisted. Like the economy is still moving here, and I'm like very proud of these people for uh, keeping the economy going. They're still doing what they do, and we're going to address that in other videos. And we most definitely plan on helping out where we can help out. There's so many things going on, but these back to the original topics. These are the reasons why I came here. You know, America. It just, it just got too small for me in terms of everything that is going on and the way that my thinking was starting to shape and develop and it's like, yo, we need to, we need to look at something else. And the influence of my woman over me who was really pushing hard for this because I'm a doer, you know what I mean? You can, you can be a person, you can say whatever you want to say, but I'm a, I'm a man of action and, and my action got me here. You know what I'm saying? My action and her and her her actions got us here too. You know what I mean? So uh, with that said, uh, thank y'all for watching. Once again, don't forget to subscribe, like the video, comment the, on the video, share the video with a friend. We almost at a, at a thousand. We we pretty close to 800 subscribers right now. Just real quick, quick. Our goal is to, to reach a thousand. And once we re reach a thousand subscribers and 4,000 watch hours, we're able to turn this into a business. We're able to turn this into a business and we're able to use that money, not only to live a lifestyle here, but to also to give back and to push the, our, commu our community in the right direction. Like we need, we need money. That goes without saying, you know what I'm saying? I, I mean, I'm gonna get money one way or another, but this here is a source of income and I truly, truly, truly do appreciate all of you that have taken the time just to listen to the video, watch the video, and I just want you to continue. And if you got anything on your mind, just let me know. You know what I'm saying? I'm not a guru or a preacher or any of those things. I'm just a black man in a, in, in, from America, now in the Gambia, just trying to be with my people. And y'all my people. So if anything y'all want to talk about, anything you want to address, you let me know if I'm messing up. If I said something wrong, you could correct me. You know what I mean? There, there, there's been such positivity. I think it's we're like 99.9% .9 positivity. Most of the things that people have to say is, you know, it's because they don't know and it's just a question they want to ask. You're entitled to your opinion. That's the one thing I'm going to tell you. You're most definitely entitled to your opinion. I can never change a person's opinion. I can only voice my opinion on top of their opinion, opinion and say it is what it is. You no, know? but this is your channel too. Don't ask for no money, but this is your channel too. So with that, I'm going to say peace. And remember, the journey continues. America has become too dangerous for black people. Black people, come out of her. The solution is in Africa. By breaking news, an unarmed black man has just been murdered by three white officers. You'll surely see. You'll surely see. You'll surely see.